In the chill of the 1950s, a different kind of war was brewing. A conflict not solely of bullets and bombs, but of ideologies and influence. The Cold War, a silent power struggle between the democratic West and the communist East, was echoing its reverberations worldwide. Among the key players in this global chess game was the Central Intelligence Agency, or the CIA, the United States cloak and dagger arm operating in the shadows, away from the prying eyes of the public. On the opposite side of the world, in the tropical archipelago of the Philippines, the CIA was locked in a covert battle against the Hucks, a tenacious communist guerrilla movement. The Hucks, short for Hukbalahap, were determined to sow the seeds of communism in the fertile soil of the post-World War II Philippines. Their resilience proved a formidable adversary for the CIA, forcing the agency to consider unorthodox strategies. In this grand game of espionage and subterfuge, the line between reality and the supernatural blurred. The CIA, in a move as ingenious as it was eerie, turned to an ancient legend deeply ingrained in the Filipino psyche. As the tension intensified, an unexpected weapon came into play, the Aswang. In the shadows of the Philippine jungles, whispers of the Aswang started to circulate. The Aswang, an embodiment of malevolence from Filipino folklore, was said to be lurking in the darkness. This creature, a shape-shifting entity known for its vampiric tendencies and grotesque transformations, was no stranger to the inhabitants of the archipelago. It was a name that had been feared since the Spanish colonial era, a name that sent chills down the spine of anyone who heard it. Suddenly, this fear was awakened once more, not by ancient tales told around a fire, but by whispers spread by an unlikely source, the Central Intelligence Agency. In the midst of the Cold War, the CIA was locked in a fierce struggle with the Hucks, a communist guerrilla movement in the Philippines. In this game of shadows and secrets, the agency saw an opportunity to use the Aswang to their advantage. The CIA began to weave tales of the Aswang, enhancing its already terrifying image. They reinforced the narrative of the Aswang as a relentless predator, one that hunted under the cover of darkness, targeting those who dared to defy its will. The Aswang was painted as a creature that would stop at nothing to satisfy its insatiable hunger. A creature that would drain the life from its victims. The Hux, who were the intended targets of these rumors, found themselves caught in the grip of a fear that was both ancient and renewed. The Aswang, once a character of folklore, had suddenly become a very real threat. The Hux, who had been emboldened by their ideology, found their courage tested by the prospect of coming face to face with this embodiment of evil. The CIA's psychological warfare was not limited to the Hux. The rumors of the Aswang spread like wildfire, reaching the ears of ordinary Filipinos. The fear of the Aswang, once contained within the realm of myth and legend, had infiltrated reality. The line between folklore and fact was blurred and the Aswang was unleashed. But the CIA didn't stop at mere whispers. One day, a lifeless body was found, punctured and drained of blood. These shocking words spread through the community like wildfire, instilling a deep sense of fear. The body, devoid of its life-giving fluid, became the chilling embodiment of the Aswang rumors that had been circulating. The Aswang, a creature of Philippine folklore known for its shape-shifting abilities and insatiable appetite for human flesh and blood, was believed to have struck. The discovery of the blood-drained body was seen as undeniable proof of its existence. This creature, once merely a character in bedtime stories meant to frighten children, had seemingly come to life. The Aswang, according to the tales, was capable of blending in with society, living amongst its victims undetected. Its ability to infiltrate human society through marriage and adapt to both urban and rural environments made it a terrifyingly real threat. The blood-drained body was the perfect testament to the Aswang's supposed abilities. The punctured wounds, the lifeless form and the absence of blood were all telltale signs of an Aswang attack. The locals, already familiar with the folklore, were quick to identify the telltale signs and connect the gruesome discovery to the mythical creature. The discovery of the body amplified the Aswang rumors. The fear among the Hux, the communist guerrilla movement in the Philippines, intensified. This wasn't just a story anymore. The Aswang, with its blood-draining capabilities, was now a tangible threat. The psychological warfare was working. The CIA's strategy to spread rumors of the Aswang 
coupled with the discovery of the blood-drained body, was effective in sowing fear and uncertainty. The Hux, previously a formidable force, were now gripped by a fear of the supernatural. And so, the Aswang was no longer a mere rumor. The blood-drained body was a terrifying testament to its existence, a chilling reminder of the power of fear in warfare. It was a perfect example of how folklore, when used strategically, could be transformed into a potent weapon. The power of folklore had been harnessed for a new kind of warfare. The use of the Aswang, a creature of myth and terror in Filipino society, illustrates this point with chilling clarity. The Central Intelligence Agency, in their fight against the Hukpalahap Rebellion, a communist guerrilla movement in the Philippines, exploited the deep-rooted fear of this creature to their advantage. The Aswang, a shape-shifting evil entity, was a symbol of everything that was feared and detested in the Filipino society. Its reputation as a vampire, ghoul, witch and a transforming beast hybrid had been woven into the fabric of Filipino culture spanning centuries. The Aswang was a creature that infiltrated human society, harming and devouring others without any specific motive, causing terror wherever it went. The CIA, recognizing the power of this folklore, used it as a psychological weapon against the Hawks. They spread rumors that these evil men would be attacked by an Aswang. To make this threat tangible, they drained a dead body of its blood and punctured it with holes, leaving it for others to find. This horrifying sight, coupled with the fear of the Aswang, was intended to demoralize and deter the Hawks. The potency of this strategy lay not only in the fear of the Aswang but also in its cultural significance. It was an inversion of traditional Filipino values, a creature that targeted its own kin and engaged in lewd behavior. By painting the Hux as potential targets of the Aswang, the CIA was essentially branding them as transgressors of societal norms. This strategy had far-reaching implications not just for the fight against the Hux but for the broader course of the Cold War in the Philippines. It demonstrated the power of folklore in warfare, a tool that could be harnessed to manipulate perceptions, incite fear, and control narratives. It was a reminder that sometimes the most effective weapons are those that lurk in the shadows of our collective psyche. In the end, the Aswang was more than a creature of folklore. It was a weapon of war, 